Hi everybody, today we are talking about Snowflower and the Secret Fan by Lisa C. I just want to start out straight up by saying I loved this book. I know a lot of times in my reviews I don't share my opinion till the end or I'm very neutral on my opinions. I don't give star ratings, things like that, but I would give this a five star. If I love it, then I will give it a five star. If I get that impression. If I think I would want to ever read it again, then I most likely would be saying, yeah, it's a five star because I enjoyed it enough that I'm going to read it again. So just heads up, this book's great. So anyways, let's talk about it. Um, I'm going to do a spoiler free like I always do, but I don't know, maybe in the future I'll, I'll do one that is talking all about it. I don't know if you guys think I should, then, then sure. But right now i'll just do what i always do and i keep the spoilers to a minimum so that you can appreciate the book on your own without having anything spoiled for you so that it can be fresh in your mind um so some things about this book this book i really wanted to read because i well it's a really pretty cover and i've read things by lisa c before well things just one book so far but I have another one from her as well that I want to read soon and I just finished reading this one. The first one that I read was Island of Sea Women and I also gave that book a five because that one was really good too for different reasons. It was more deep and sad. There are some sad things in here but not in the same way at all. Like that book, I have a review on that one so go watch it if you want. But this one also by Lisa C. This one has to do with Chinese um, main characters and the author herself is part Chinese as well and she always does such a good job of researching things whenever she wants to write a book. She did it with Island of Sea Women. She also did it with this one. So um, she went to China and two different places so that she could get more perspectives on this which I think is great for her to do that, to be thorough. And she admits like, if there's something that doesn't seem right, it's totally my mistake, my fault. Um, and so I just think that's really great that she does that. So with this book, with Snowflower and the Secret Fan, we start off with, a, with um, an 80 year old woman telling her story. This is her story that she tells. So it's in her perspective. Her name's Lily. And she starts the story basically by going all the way back to when she was like six years old and we learn a little bit about her family her family is kind of low status not like the lowest of low but a lower status um in where she lives and she has an opportunity to possibly change her circumstances to be brought up higher in society if depending on who she is able to be married into what family she's able to be married into we're talking about like you know 1900s or the 1800s late 1800s kind of time period here where there are certain practices that don't go on anymore such as foot binding and getting arranged marriages when you're basically 11 like knowing who you're going to get married to without seeing them until you're 17 and, and stuff like that things that are mostly not happening anymore. Like the foot binding is practice. And I had, I knew a little bit about foot binding before I read this, but reading it in this book just opened my eyes even more to what it could have been like for those six year old girls having to get their toes broken, their bones broken and crushed to be able to get them into this specific size to fit into this little tiny boot that they call a shoe, but this little handmade shoe that is like this big, basically. Like, or I think seven centimeters is like the ideal golden lily or lotus that they call it when it's like that small. And I'm like, seven centimeters, what? what are they talking about? And it might just be part of the foot, not the entire thing. Cause I'm like, that's so small. Um, but they mentioned that like certain parts of the foot 
being seven centimeters or less is like is more ideal and so I don't know the more I say that the more that sounds insane so I'm probably wrong in what I'm relate remembering but it's just the point is that it is so small and the way that it's described in the perspective of this 80 year old woman who's writing it as if she's her seven-year-old self because she actually waited a year until she was seven for hers to be done because of the arch of her foot was so beautiful that they were like this is an opportunity for her to her to have perfect feet if we wait a year and that could get her to marry into a, a higher family of higher status and so they waited a year for her to do that and also by waiting a year this matchmaker who was checking the feet and making sure that this is the correct call for her also said we should set you up with an old same an old same which is lao tong it means old same which is you get set up with one woman one kid and then that your whole entire life you, that's who you're set up with as like your forever friend basically there's also something that when you are a woman you get to be um you get to have sworn sisters or you get to have a uh, lao tong and that if you don't if you don't have an old same if you only have sworn sisters sworn sisters basically are there for you until you get married and then they might I don't think they stay with you after that but at some point you don't get the sworn sisters anymore because you your priority is now your husband and and things change a little bit but if you have an old same they are almost more important than your husband even you're married but you still have contact with your old same forever through everything um until one of you dies basically and so it's better but it's more rare because you have to have all eight characters line up, which I think is the eight characters is basically like, were you born in the same year, in the same month, or on the same day even, or did you get your foot bindings done on, at the same time? And like all things like that, where just like everything matches and it lines up. And the more things that match and line up, the better it is for you to be able to be matched with somebody. So that's why it's kind of harder to accomplish and it's more of a commitment because you're with them forever and you sign a contract that you will always be with that person for your whole life. Even if you, I mean, you're not living in the same place, but you're supposed to visit each other like monthly, you're supposed to write to each other. It's supposed to be very like sacred relationship and you, um, this is something you want to have. And so Lily, our main character, Lily, she is fortunate enough to be able to be matched with an old same. And this old same is Snowflower. And Snowflower comes from a higher family and they get together and she comes to visit Lily pretty much monthly, stays over at their house and they, they learn from each other, they teach from each other. But before they even meet, the secret fan Snowflower writes a little message in Nushu, I, yeah, <laughs> which is the women's unique language that only women know. And the women write that in letters to each other. They have songs that they sing in this language. It's basically just to kind of be separate from men's language because they don't really learn about men's worlds and there's, they don't deal with men stuff they stay upstairs in their own women's chamber and they do their cleaning and the cooking and all the women duties and they stay out of the men duties basically and so they don't need to learn how to like read and write necessarily they need to just do their own things and so they have a secret language that they can communicate through and so basically with this secret language she writes a passage on the secret fan that basically says i am very excited to to meet you we will be old sames forever like written very beautifully and lily was like oh like i don't even know if i deserve this like she's so much better than me and she writes so beautifully and so she writes a message back saying like um i apologize if my writing isn't as good as yours basically but she gets help from her aunt and her mother to write per, write a nice message and Anyway, they, they go to the temple, they they sign a contract together so that they can be old saints. 
And from then on, a lot of our story is about their relationship with each other and how they communicate with each other and how they grow up together. A lot of sad things happen to members of their family. A lot of things go sideways that weren't supposed to happen, but there's also a lot of very fortunate things that happen as well, especially to Lily because her feet did turn out to be really beautiful. And so she was able to be very fortunate in a lot of things growing up. She was able to get into a good family to be married into. And so we kind of see both sides of how things could go for women depending on where they are at in their lives. And each step of their lives is really important if they want to get to the point where they can have a good life or their life can really be starting and they can have a good life and stuff like that. So we get basically to hear their entire lives through the perspective of Lily and she goes through all of those years. I really liked, like I said, reading the foot binding chapter because it just made me see more into that world that just seems crazy to, to think about doing that. Like I, I even like, stood up on my toes like curled my toes under and stood just to kind of see what it would feel like I know it's not exactly the same because I have full-grown feet but I was just kind of seeing what it would feel like to put pressure on those toes and it was not pleasant even for like 30 seconds and so just knowing that these children had to go through this is just it's crazy learning all about how the old sames come together and and their relationship was just so great to read. I just loved, I just wanted to continue reading. I knew I loved this book after like 30 pages. I just already knew I was like, I'm gonna love this book. And it continued to be great for me. I continued to enjoy it. I continued to like reading about what was going to happen in, in Lily and Snowflower's lives and their futures and what was gonna happen to them when they grew up. If you would like to read a story about two women and their lives together and how their friendship can be tested and how it survives and how it endures and all the things that happen with them you should read this because it's it's just a really eye-opening experience of what things could have been like if we lived during this time in this country so far lisa c is proving to be a pretty good author so Anyways, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.